Hello, and welcome to another session on using Blender for video editing. Today we're going to talk about motion tracking, and what is that? Well, it's built into the name. We're going to take something and then track the motion of it over time. So as you can see in this video I have loaded here, I've got an ant that kind of makes its way across the screen. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a tracking marker for that ant and then go through the steps so that Blender will follow it. It'll do its tracking and then we can make use of the results. So what can you do once you have something that is uh, motion tracked? What we're going to see here is how to pair up uh, a motion tracker with a mask. Because as we saw in some of our previous videos, we can create masks in Blender. We can, they can be uh, very detailed. And then we can animate it over time because if your subject moves, uh, th or at least it changes the position inside of your video, then for the mask to be effective, that mask must also move. And we can pair up uh, the mask with our motion tracker uh, so that the mask will move as the motion tr tracker does, uh, following the subject along. And uh, then we can tweak it as needed once we've paired it up in that sense. Okay, so before we get started, uh, let's just quickly again look at the footage we have. You can see here I've got two uh, different timeline markers that I've already set up, which you can see is when we first start seeing the ant moving and all the way up until when it is no longer visible, it, it has gone up past the top of the screen. What I want to do now before we get started is just set another timeline marker right about here where it's at like the midpoint uh, from the bottom to top. So I'm just going to call that, um, I'll just say uh, masking here. And the reason we're going to do that is because when it comes to doing the motion tracking, you can track forwards into the video or backwards. I have heard that it's a good idea to uh, set up your tracking marker in roughly the middle uh, and then go both directions. So we're going to take that approach here. So before we start working with the motion tracking, let's quickly create the mask. And like I said, it's going to be just a very simple uh, circular mask. And I have covered mask creation uh, quite a bit in my prior videos. So I won't go um, into much here. I won't really describe much at all of what I'm doing. Uh, but because if, if you need a refresh or anything, please just watch those videos. Because I want to spend most of my time here talking about motion tracking. Okay, so I've got my mask. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and call this uh, ant mask just for kicks. Okay, and, and that's it. So we are ready now to start with motion tracking. Okay, so uh, motion tracking can be done in this same workspace that we have. Now, if you click on the plus button and then go into VFX, video effects, you see we have masking and we have motion tracking. I've looked at them both. They're basically the same, some differences, but the key thing to know is that motion tracking is done inside of this same editor that we have open right now, which is the movie clip editor. Creating masks and tracking, all you have to do is switch modes um, using this drop down here, and you can also press the tab key like this to jump between the two. Um, so we can continue with our current setup. Okay, and I don't need any of these things, so let me just push those things over. And I want to see my timeline markers, so let me expand that out and uh, maybe zoom in a little bit over here. There we go. Okay, so now that we are in tracking mode, let's take a look and see what's different. So along the left-hand side, we have a bunch of different panels and one thing right here over here this is one of the first things we should be doing is clicking this button to add a tracking marker 
So like I said, we are going to create a marker so that we can follow this ant. So I'll click add and then you use your mouse and you click where you want the marker to go. So I want it around here. So I'll go ahead and click there and you can see now we have a, a tiny little square here. There is another way to create uh, the tracking marker, which is by holding down on the control key and then left clicking with your mouse. So what I'm going to do is just to show you that I'll click this delete button with this marker still selected and confirm. And then this time I will hold down on control and click there and there you go. That's the other way to add a tracking marker. Okay, so we've got our marker. Now let's keep looking. Going further down along this left hand side, the next panel is this thing that's named tracking settings. This is where you would go if you want to set up the overall settings for all of the markers that you create in your project. So you'll notice I didn't actually touch any of those settings before I added the marker and that's not a problem because I can change the settings for this marker in a different spot. So let's not worry about that and look at the final panel down here which I need to click to expand. This is called track and this is essentially the control panel for doing all the tracking. So along the top here these are the buttons to do the tracking this one, the uh, third button here, is to get it to track from this point on forwards. So it, as much as possible, if it can make it through to the, to the end of the clip, then it will, uh, but it might stop. The reason it would stop is if it cannot find that feature that we've uh, selected using our marker in, in the frames coming up. Uh, this button to the left of that is same idea except it tracks going backwards and that's pretty much all there is to say about that. The ones on the ends, the, the first and the fourth, that's if you want to track just a single frame. Um, usually I would only do that if I'm running into issues and I have to keep tweaking the settings. Normally I just use these inner ones. Uh, going down onto clear, sometimes what you find is that you start doing your tracking and then things go really weird. Uh, like for example, your subject is passing by something and then the tr then Blender thinks, uh, starts associating the tracker with something that was in the background and it starts following the background object instead of your subject. When that happens, you can return to an appropriate spot in the timeline and then use these buttons to clear off what it had tried to detect um, and then restart. I normally don't bother because you can just click the track button and it pretty much will overwrite whatever it, it had done before. The The last few I, I don't use, so um, I can't speak to those. So now let's look at what's on the right here. Uh, right now I need to switch it over to this button here. This is important. Uh, make sure we have it set to track and this is where you go to do all of your settings that are specific to this tracking marker that we've created. Now at the top here is just the name. You can call it whatever you want. You can leave it at the defaults. I'm going to call it ant butt and you might be able to guess why. Because, and if I zoom in here, what I am going to do next is reposition the marker so that it is pretty much focused on the bottom of this ant. What I've learned through trial and error is that it's usually best to um, choose something that's quite distinctive in as your feature that you want to track and not too uh, complicated. So for example, what I tried first was expanding this out and you can see I'm, I'm just using the regular keys. I, mean, I was using G to grab and reposition and then S to scale out the size of the uh, tracking marker. Uh, first I was trying to track this and it didn't work at all. But then I tried again and scaled it down, basically made it the size so that it could see, uh, it was covering basically just the abdomen here, the butt of the ant, and that works really well. Now, 
Over here is your viewport into what Blender is looking at. This is telling us that this thing here, this is what Blender is going to try to find in the following frames. And that's how the motion tracking works. It's looking at this and trying to find it in the subsequent frames. Let me uh, pull this out a bit more so we can see a little bit more uh, of the different fields here. Um, I never touch these. Um, I'm not sure what they do, but so far I've had pretty good success without fiddling with them. I'm going to expand that. So objects I haven't used. Uh, plane track is something I will talk about in a future video, but not now. Tracking settings. Here we go. This is the panel here, which is pretty much the same as what we see over here. So again, on the left hand side, that's for setting up uh, the different values for tracking markers that you're about to create. This section over here is for changing the settings for the active selected tracking marker. Now, so let's look at the settings now. First option here is motion model. And essentially it's how do you want Blender to do the tracking? So remember when we were looking through the footage, we saw what I recorded, it was a fixed camera, right? Camera not moving, background's not moving, It was and it was top down. So really it was just the ant moving around on the screen. So the location of the subject will, will change. Uh, but we also saw that the ant was turning left and right. So when we click over here on the drop down, we see the different options. Default is location, but what would work better is location and rotation because that's what was happening. So we can select that. These are the other options, which I, I haven't really uh, played around with much. I have used uh, the scale option before, and that's when the subject is uh, changing in size. So like uh, somebody is coming towards the camera or away from the camera, that kind of thing. But for this example, we will pick location and rotation. Match. This is how you want it to match or what you're trying to match. So the default is keyframe, which means for every single frame that is going to be doing the motion tracking, we're going to try to compare against the keyframe, which is this first frame that we've established. If we create another keyframe later on, then it'll be uh, comparing against the next keyframe. When it's looking inside of the current frame, it's trying to find this piece from that keyframe. The other option is previous frame. So it's really just going frame by frame. Okay, first find it here, you know, this thing in the current frame, and then next time in the next frame is gonna try to compare against what it had just seen uh, in the prior frame. Uh, Pre-pass, um, not sure what that is. I never touch it, it's all checked on by default. Normalize is something that you should use if uh, your subject or feature is moving between lit areas and shadows. As this pop-up description shows, it does slow things down. So my footage, um, there are no shadows. It's constant light all across, so I won't turn that on. Tracking settings, extras. Um, these are things which we will probably have to use here. Correlation is basically how good of a match does it need to be for Blender to consider that it found the feature in the current frame and can continue working? So by default, it's uh, 0.75, 75%. If you find that it's matching the wrong thing a lot, then you wanna use a higher value. If you find that it keeps stopping, even though it looks like it should have matched, then you can reduce that value. And I think we're gonna see that that's gonna be the case here and we will have to change it but for now we'll leave it alone. Um, I don't usually use these things. Speed is literally how fast do you want Blender to do its motion tracking. If you have a super fast computer and you keep the default value of fastest, uh, it might actually finish before you even realize it because that's, that's what happened when I was playing around on, on my uh, new desktop computer, it was really fast. You can also choose real time so it actually goes in real time or even slower. It's up to you. For me, for this laptop I'm working on now, I will choose fastest and it will not be fast. We, we, we will be able to see it thinking. 
Okay, um, camera, don't need to touch that for what I'm doing here. Marker, a lot of these are things that we can change here, like the pattern area, that's this white box here. Uh, but we don't need to touch these numbers directly. Uh, as you saw before, we can just uh, press up S and start scaling and it's changing these values. So I don't see a reason to touch these. Uh, this search area thing, it defines the area around the tracking marker that Blender will look in the next frame for, for this feature. And, uh, you know, these numbers don't really mean anything to me. Um, hard to visualize, but what you can do is literally visualize by going up to Clip Display and checking the search option underneath Marker Display. As soon as we click that, there you go. Now we can see the box. So pretty much what's going to happen is once we start this tracking process, uh, when we move into the next frame, it will look within this space for this feature and it will find it and then it'll just keep moving and uh, you'll see the values. I mean, if we, if we kept this air, this spot open, which um, I, I won't do because I prefer having uh, this part visible, but you'll see that those numbers will change over time because our subject is moving across the video. Now, one last thing before we start, I want to turn this option on, toggle lock selection. What that, that is going to do is it's going to set it up so that as the tracking happens, Blender will keep the tracking marker exactly where it is on screen right now, which is really nice because that means we can have it zoomed in and we, it won't just fly off the screen um, and we, we don't have to like scroll around to hunt it down. We'll be able to see it as it's going. Let me just zoom out a little bit and we are finally going to get started. I'm going to click on this button now to start the tracking process. Let's see how it goes. It, it made it to the end. Well, mostly. I mean, you can see from uh, my timeline markers, it's not quite there yet. Uh, but it, it, got, it went from here all the way to there. And what are we looking at? Now that we've done it, you can see we have a red dotted line and a blue dotted line. That's Blender's way of showing us this is where the marker was in the past, and this is where it's we're detecting it in the future. So as I go frame, actually, let me turn off this uh, lock and then we'll see it better. And if I zoom in a bit more, you see the next point is over here. So when I press the right arrow to move forward one frame, you can see there it is. And then it's going to jump here and then here and here. So you get the idea, that's what it's doing. Uh, and let me turn um, toggle lock selection back on. Uh, and let's just keep going here. And where does it stop? You know, I'll just scrub. Oh, right about there. Okay, so this was the last frame. And when we go one more over, you see all of a sudden this becomes a dark purple or pink. That's Blender's way of telling us that it wasn't able to find anything. Blender will keep doing the tracking until it either makes it to the end of the video or it cannot find it. So in this case, it wasn't able to. And what we can do is manually set up some keyframes as we need to, and then let it continue to run. Uh, before we do that, I just want to point out that uh, because we had enabled the location and rotation, you can see that it is properly detecting the rotation of the abdomen over time, which is pretty neat. Like over here, it even did, was that like 45 degrees? Anyway, so what we're gonna do now, just to finish this off, is we're just gonna scrub through and see when do we need to make some changes. Uh, so remember, if we're going to animate anything and set keyframes, we wanna turn this on, the auto keying, okay? And looks like it can stay there for now. Um, and then it needs to start moving. So what I'm going to do is manually set a keyframe right here without actually changing anything by pressing G to grab and then pressing enter to just lock that in. So we have that keyframe set. Um, and then I will use the right arrow and say, okay, so we need to bring this down 
to about this point and maybe rotate it like that. And let's see if we do it that way. And notice when I had set this marker, I purposely have some white space here, right? Not It's not just like so zoomed in on the abdomen that all you see is black. We do want to have this border between the abdomen and then the background. That's going to help Blender to figure out you know, what it is that it's trying to match up to. Okay, so now that I've got that set, let's try this again, see if it can finish. Not bad. It, it, it did like a, a pretty big rotation, but didn't finish. So let's just uh, keep going here. We'll set that keyframe. And what else do we need to do? A few more frames. Okay, so by that point it's going up, so I'll just manually do this part. The thing is, once you get to the edge, really you can't expect much after that. Because of the fact that it's, it's at the edge, it, it doesn't have the full image to work with anymore. So I'm okay with this as it stands, and I'll just leave it at that. For our purposes, I'm going to say we're good here, uh, at least this first part. And let's jump back to this marker, and now let's go the other way, because we still haven't covered this section yet. So same idea, um, and right now I don't think we need to change any of the settings. So instead of hitting this button, we'll hit this button to track backwards. Okay, and here it's going. And you can see it, it feels a little bit slower than going forwards. And maybe that's just because going backwards is slower than forwards, I'm not sure. Uh, last time I did this, it did stop somewhere here and I had to fiddle with the settings. So let's, oh, there we go. So right here, it didn't like it. So let's see if we can make some changes here. So I will start by uh, just doing a grab and set it in place because that's still basically the right spot. I'll press R for rotation and adjust that because it should look like that. And let's try to continue from here. Okay. I thought I might have to adjust the correlation value, but it looks like it's going to make it all the way. Sure. So, you know what, just as an experiment, because it did make it all the way, pretty much. We're almost at the start. But well, let, let's go ahead and try to see if we had reduce the correlation value. How will that look? So I will start by clicking this button to clear all of uh, the path prior to this point. Okay. Now I'm going to go over here and reduce this to, let's say, 0.6 and see how well that works. Let's see if it does a better job and if it can get all the way to... Oh, okay, it didn't get all the way to the bottom, but you can see it's closer than it was before. We're, we're, we're uh, closer to the starting point. So let's just do this one thing where we set the position and continue. Okay, and then it made it. It made it, more or less. So let's see. So I scrub through and you can see this is what it's looking like. All right, now we zoom that out and uh, we can turn this off now because we've got pretty much everything. And that's done. We have our tracking marker fully set up. So now the next step is to pair the two. We're going to uh, get this tracking marker basically attached to the mask, or is it the mask gets attached to the marker? I'm not sure which, but there is a specific order to follow. So what we're going to do, we're still in tracking mode, press Alt-A to deselect this marker. Now I'll press Tab, or can go over here and click on Mask to switch into uh, Mask mode. And now press A to make sure that our mask is selected our ant mask, okay, which is the circle. Oh, wait a minute. And before we do anything else, let's make sure we have the mask set up where it needs to be. And just because I have this timeline marker uh, set up, let's just use that because that's where it was positioned exactly. Okay, so now uh, what have we done? So we deselected the tracking marker. We switched over here. We got into the, the frame we want it to be in. We have our mask selected. 
Now we will return to tracking mode and I'll just do this by clicking so it's easier to see. And now I will press A to select the marker or I can just click on the marker like this. Okay. So now with, with this all highlighted with the, the nice bright white, it is selected. Now we're going to return to mask mode and this is the point where we can go ahead and create that relationship between the two. And to do that, it's by clicking on this button here, parent, or pressing control P. So I will press that now, and it's done. It doesn't actually show anything that it's done, but we'll know it's done because now the, the mask will follow the marker. But just to recap how, what we did there. Um, so we had our mask created, then we went into tracking mode, we created the uh, motion tracker. Then we deselected the tracker. Then we went into mask mode and selected our mask. Then we went back into the tracking mode and selected the tracker. Then we finally we went back into the mask mode and did the pairing, the did the parenting that we just did. Those are the steps we covered. And now let me go ahead and just uh, let me click on, actually, let me zoom out a bit. I think that's easier. Okay. And I'll just scrub through from start to finish and you'll see, there we go. We have our mask moving along with the tracking marker. As simple as that. And the good thing about this is that even though it's paired up, we can still make changes to it. So, uh, especially at the beginning, where you can see like it's it probably doesn't need to be quite like this, we can adjust that, right? It doesn't have to be always in that exact spot. So right over here, actually maybe at this point, what I'll do is I'll say over here, it's pretty good. And so what I will do with the mask, it's still selected, I'll press the G and press enter, that sets a keyframe. And again, remember, you, you can tell that keyframes are set by looking over here. There we go. We're at frame 829 right now. And there, that little diamond there is indicating that there's a, a keyframe set there. Uh, and now I'm going to scrub backwards and say that okay right around there is where it should probably be more like that so if we scrub through now if I use the arrow keys you can see it has a, a better positioning of the mask and I could do this all along if I really wanted to um, I don't really want to let me see can I use that over here okay let's just follow along for the most part it's decent especially this is more a demonstration of setting up the motion tracking, setting up the uh, tracking marker, not how to get the mask to be perfectly covering uh, the uh, subject at all times. But just to finish off with the demonstration, like over here, all right, I can set another keyframe there, and then I'll bring that down a bit to make sure that the ant head is in the shot and in within the mask. Uh, maybe I need to adjust a little bit over here as well. And then over here is where we need to start making it go off, right? Because at that point, over here is pretty much done. We don't need to see anything anymore, so we can do it like that. Okay, so there we go. That's This is our completed combo of a mask that is uh, connected to a tracking marker. So to finish this all off, let's go ahead and go back to video editing now and apply it. So I will go back to our video editing workspace and all I need to do now, well actually let me expand this up because right now it's hard to see. Uh, go into modifiers, add strip modifier, mask and click on mask because it is a mask not not a strip that we're working with 
and then choose it. Uh, so click on here and then choose ant mask. And there it is. Let's uh, bring that back down and then scrub across. Oh, let me hit the home button and make sure we can see everything there. Okay, and scrub like that, like that. Yep. And a little bit more and there, done. So there you have it. How you can use uh, motion tracking within Blender to track a feature. Uh, and then once you have that tracking marker created, how you can pair it up with a mask so that you have a mask that follows your subject along. And if the mask is big enough, then that's all you need to do. If you don't, um, if you don't want to be very exact on, on the mask, you just need something that does a basic blur or something like that, this'll, this could save you a bunch of time. And there's more that we can do with it, which I will show in a later video. Hope you did like that. If you did, please do give this a like and subscribe so you can see more content when it comes. Thanks and bye now.